Yeah, and, and Malik, for, 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 for the purposes of our listeners who haven't followed the elections over the years, the reason why this is important is you've had instances in the past when motorbikes have been used to snatch ballot boxes and ride off. Yes. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, one, um, it's one of the ways that people use to disrupt the election. Sometimes it's not even just snatch the ballot box. They just take an unregistered motorbike, run into a polling station, cause chaos, just ride through, pull down electoral materials, create instability and chaos and disorganization all over the, all over the place, and then ride off. Mm -hmm. And because these motorbikes are unregistered, sometimes it's difficult to trace who the owners are and to hold anybody responsible mm -hmm. for such conduct. It's the reason why this is absolutely important, that those who intend to use these kinds of motorbikes to create problems in polling centers are told that you, it is outlawed for you to drive, ride any motorbike 400 meters close to any polling center. If you were to do that, the police and other security agencies are entitled to take whatever measures that they have mm. to, to stop you from, from going. And it's a this. wider national ban, though, on the use of motorbikes during the, that huge block of time. Right. 5 p.m. to 6 a.m., that, 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 that is the one that I guess will, will try a lot of attention. I guess the 400 meters from the polling station, it's a reasonable one. The question is whether, of course, we know what the reasons are why they'll ban the use of motorbike around that time, but enforcement becomes an issue. I mean, it, what it means in essence is that, uh, we, we need to speak to the police maybe a bit more about this. What it means in essence is that nobody, if you see me using a motorbike, be, between the periods of 5 p.m. tomorrow to 6 a.m., what, are you going to be arrested? And I can see this thing, yeah. it will not be enforced at all. Because in many, many parts of this country, the only means for people to move about is motorbikes. Especially in the northern region. Absolutely. So how are you going to tell someone in Tamale, Navongo, Borga, Tumu, Wa, that they shouldn't use a motorbike? That means you are, ground, you are grounding everything to a halt. It will not happen. I think what will happen and is remember, that people 5 PM, can... 5 p.m., People will be returning from work absolutely. in Tamale. It's the reason why this is absolutely important, that those who intend to use these kinds of motorbikes to create problems in polling centers are told that you, it is outlawed for you to drive, ride any motorbike 400 meters close to any polling center. If you were to do that, the police and other security agencies are entitled to take whatever measures that they have mm. to, to stop you from, from going. And it's a this. wider national ban, though, on the use of motorbikes during the, that huge block of time. Right. 5 p.m. to 6 a.m., that, 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 that is the one that I guess will, will try a lot of attention. I guess the 400 meters from the polling station, it's a reasonable one. The question is whether, of course, we know what the reasons are why they'll ban the use of motorbike around that time, but enforcement becomes an issue. It, I mean, it, it, what it means in essence is that uh, we, we need to speak to the police maybe a bit more about this. What it means in essence is that nobody, if you see me using a motorbike, be, between the periods of 5 p.m. tomorrow to 6 a.m., what, are you going to be arrested? And I can see Ooh. this thing, yeah. it will not be enforced at all. Because in many, many parts of this country, the only means for people to move about is motorbikes. Especially in the northern region. Absolutely. So how are you going to tell someone in Tamale, Navongo, Borga, Tumu, Wa, that they shouldn't use a motorbike? That means you are, ground, you are grounding everything to a halt. It will not happen. I think what will happen and is remember, that people 5 PM, can... 5 p.m., People will be returning from work Absolutely. in Tamale, mm -hmm. in the northern region, Upper East, and they'll be using the motorbikes. Right. And so, what happens to them? And, and, and I might quickly note, though, that we'll, we'll try and get we'll try and get the um, we'll try and get the, the police uh, to you know sort of explain exactly. this a bit more. Because I mean, because people will be asking questions here. Because Delta. we will need clarity on this. Are you talking about only the polling centers or nationwide? Nationwide. If, People can use their motorbikes, but will not get close to where we are voting. Uh, or after the voting between 5 p.m. and 6 a.m., can they use their motorbikes? Or you are having an outright ban of the use of motorbikes within the period. Yeah. That would create uh, issues here. Yeah, there will be concerns me. of your safety. Yeah. Yeah, because if, if you look at what she says, she said 5 p.m. to 6 a.m., mm. use of motorbikes not permitted. Yeah. That means it's completely outlawed. You can use it. Uh, okay. For many areas, let's, it will be difficult to enforce Let's this. Let's hold your horses briefly. Um, wait, let's... Let's quickly go to the MPP headquarters uh, because, of course, we are, we are watching everything that is unfolding today as we prepare for the election. The MPP is alleging that the governing NDC has uh, connived with the EC official Supreme 600,000 new voter ID cards. A press conference by the MPP is underway at the party's headquarters. Joseph Bokugapo is there for us tonight. Joseph, where's the evidence? Uh, Janice and uh, Joy FMA.
So I'm just um, holding on to Then, so that when they put me through, they have to convince me about what I just put about. So, yeah. Okay. In the next minute. Or two. I'm not sure Joseph has our attention. We'll try and get Joseph back to have our attention, and we can ask him a few questions. As far as um, as far as, uh, hello, Joseph. Oh, yeah, well, Evans, the NPP's um, campaign manager, Mr. Peter McPenu, has been addressing the media here at the NPP headquarters. Uh, mainly, he's been speaking about two main things. First of all, he's been talking about what he says is an obsession that the NDC plans to roll out going into the elections tomorrow that they've codenamed. Operation Tender, and with that, they managed to connive with uh, some officials of the EC to print out 600,000 class illegal voter ID cards, and they've gotten those out to some persons, and then they'll be using that to actually cast their votes. He's also been claiming that they have concerns about the movement of some military equipment across the country, uh, you know, with a day to the elections. He mentions the G3 rifle, which he says that it's um, a military equipment that has been decommissioned, and so they have concerns about some of those equipment being put out there uh, going into the polls. Let, 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 let's speak to Mr. McMenu here uh, for him to give us some additional details on these allegations that he's making. Mr. McMenu, thanks very much for joining us here on Journey. First of all, you, you claim that some 600,000, you know, voter ID cards have been put out there illegally. Uh, the, the, the first question that comes to mind is, who have these cards been issued out to? They have been issued out to NDC supporters and their advice, who have two clear aims. One, to collude with election, some election officials and get over to the manual verification system and vote. And two, to frustrate potential voters who have lost their cards, but who do not in any way need the cards in order to vote. That's interesting because the assumption then becomes that most of these NDC supporters themselves may be registered voters. So why the need for illegal voter ID cards for them in addition to probably the voter ID cards that they have already? The register, as we all admit and know, is bloated. And they know those who are not alive and those who may have traveled and how issued the fake voter ID card in their name, in the names of those who are not alive. But it, it will definitely be impossible to vote with a fake ID card because there is a biometric registration system these ID cards come with the face of people on it. So that if it's a fake ID card of someone who is dead or may have traveled out of the country, no NDC person would be able to make use of that in casting his or his or her vote, can he? That is why I said they are doing this in collusion with some EC officer and get their way through the manual verification, the manual system of voting. And also, by being in the queue with cars, they intend to frustrate those who do not have cars, but which are allowed under the law, who are allowed under the law to vote anyway. It's, it's a little because, you know, um, really wrapping one's mind around it, because then, Getting these ID cards may not have been necessary at all. If really, they are planned to get the next I have, I have told you that some EC officials have issued statements to the person who come and you don't have a card. You will wait for those who have card in the queue to go first. But that is not correct. President, also, when I had to advise the message along the same lines that you are also advising the people that you don't necessarily need the card to actually get your vote cast or anything like that. So so then, again, it goes to the point. Some of these cards may not exactly be a necessary tool in order to get your it vote cast. a tool to frustrate people who have lost their cards. That's what I'm saying. The bigger so question, the, person, the president has issued that, uh, that statement. I'm also issuing a statement that, that some election officials have said that when they, 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 they are in the queue, those without cards will have to step aside for those without cards. To come through. The bigger question then becomes what evidence are you giving us as members of the media, as members of the public, to back this allegation that you're making that there are more than 600,000 illegally you know, put out voter ID cards? A day to election, you don't wait. I am alert, and I have told you I have alerted all our police to be mindful of cars which are fake. We have given out the numbers to them. But you don't have any evidence to show us. The evidence is for them at the police stations tomorrow. What does that evidence consist? Let us know about this. At least, it's not so encouraging now. 
Okay, we're struggling now to hear um, that conversation that is currently ongoing between my colleague Joseph Kukugapo. Please, Kukugapo. photocopies of it for a oh. piece of this task. We don't have none of it. I am, because then I am telling you. Well, well, we are not in the same city that Okay, again, struggling in, uh, to hear this. Okay. To the respected agent. And I'm cautioning the public to be wary of those people. That's the intent of it. If you are not ready to prove it, then maybe you can all take it to a pinch of salt. Will that be fair to you? It is meant to notify the public of what has been done under an operation um, operation tender. Isn't this? And I am meant? telling you that those in operation tender, they know what I'm talking about. And my people in the field, that is our agents, know what I'm talking about. But I needed to let the entire Ghana force know about it, and I'm happy that I've gotten this opportunity to alert Ghana that they are fake. Both ID cards to frustrate potential voters and to collude with some EC officials to pay their way to use manual. Let's have a conversation about the second issue that you raised. Uh, you talk about the movement of military equipment across the country, something that you find very uncomfortable. Uh, the military guidance of the police have a duty to ensure protection tomorrow as we go into the polls. Aren't they just doing their job? And doesn't this end up putting them in a very bad light? Which would not be helpful for the process more. It is proper to put them in bad light because what they are doing is bad. First, the G3 rifles have been phased out of system for the past three or four years. That's why I use the word they have been decommissioned. Why are you giving them out now to untrained people? That is, cadets who just pass out from the police, even if they are going to use. And in any case, do we use weapons at our police station? That's why we should probably be concerned about this. Because uh, they, 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 they may be used for other ulterior but to intimidate, to harass, not necessarily at the police station, but for other purposes. So we need to find out from the Inspector General of Police and the Chief of Defense that why these huge numbers of G3 rifles being issued out to the police at this hour. You say huge numbers. Yes. What is the numbers look like? Because... In in uh, in, in Keshi alone, it was about 400. In in Tamale, it was about 250. In other jurisdictions, close to over 100. So it's huge. We have pictures of the movement of these armies. Again, it goes back to the conversation about uh, evidence. Uh, I think you must be mindful of time. But I have everything on my pictures on my phone. I can WhatsApp them to you. As I'm telling you that GP number and everything. And that's why I'm calling on the chief of defense staff and the ID to come and deny whether Amri at Tamale in Keshi, etc. Rifles, G3, have not moved out between yesterday and today. Is this an indication that you don't trust the security officials and even officials of the election committee? Is that indication that Ghana's elections over the years have never used weapons of this magnitude? So it's a cause of concern. And I'm raising that concern to the international community, to the Kenyan public, for the chief of defense staff and the IDP to respond. Are, uh, you know, comments like this helpful going into this election for the nation in terms of keeping the peace and keeping tension low and ensuring that we come out of this entire process in one piece? Who so gave, especially, who gave, especially who? when... Who, Most of who, these allegations whose authority and then whose authority were the instructions given for these rifles to be sent out to the police? Who gave the instructions? And for what purpose? Do you know who would you That's why I'm asking the Chief of Defense Staff and the IGP. After all, we know that the National Election Security Task Force has been formed. The police, the military, the immigration, the fire service form the call who are going to police our police station. Look here, as I speak today, there have been some shootouts today at Asutifi South, which is a cause of worry. Yesterday, there were some shootout at Cherponi Constituent. So it calls for national attention on these matters of G3 rifles going out to the police. But there's no evidence without... that these shootings happen with it may be three rifles. In fact, but... in the Cherponi case, for example, which we followed very keenly, the negation is that the shooting 
was not just a result of activities or actions by newly recruited police persons who you alleged are the people in possession of these G3 rifles. I am saying that these acts of shooting and violence should not be countenance for the election. And you cannot shoot with your back. So where are these weapons going? Let's talk about uh, you know the final bit of it, um, so that in, in 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 the light of all of these concerns that you're raising, allegations against the military, allegations against the electoral commission officials, beyond putting this out in the media, have you petitioned those in charge, like the CDS, like My the electoral commission, on these particular concerns, and lots of official we, complaints? We have eight hours to election, and the public must know every minute what's going to happen in the next few uh, hours. We don't have the luxury of time. So we are requesting the chief of defense staff and the IGP to respond whether large movements of G3 have not gone out of various arms and where they are going to and for what purpose. This, this gives me the impression you can expect more of these allegations. Uh, oh, of course. It's it's like, if, if you see it's coming it's, to be unsubstantiated. It's not coming, it's it's not coming, for, it's it's coming for the good of the people of Ghana and our elections. That's it. German, German. So that's the campaign chairman of um, the new patriotic party there, Mr. Uh, Peter McMenu, who has been addressing the press and been providing further detail on those uh, specific allegations that they are making against the Electoral Commission and also uh, official of um, the Electoral Commission, which, um, well, he went on to pull those details out, but it's not exactly provide any specific evidence back then, ever. Okay, thank you very much, Joseph, um, who is with us live from the MPP headquarters. Uh, we also have on the telephone line with us the, uh, the campaign coordinator of uh, the uh, NDC, the John Mahama campaign, uh, Kofi Adams, who joins us on the telephone line right now. Thank you, Ms. Adams, uh, for your time here on your election headquarters. I don't know if you've heard any of those allegations, but that's by way of recapping. The NPP just finished a press conference. Two main allegations were thrown out there. One is that they have evidence to show that your party, you've printed uh, 600,000 voter ID cards that you're distributing to NDC supporters across the country. And they also suggest a collusion between yourself and some EC officers who are going to aid you in using those ID cards to get your members to the polling stations to frustrate the system and also to sideline people who uh, get to the polling stations without ID cards. Uh, that's one. And they also go ahead to allege that uh, they have evidence that the, the chief of defense staff and the IGP have, uh, in the last few days, been deploying, um, you know, some unusual weapons and ammunition to some parts of the country. They talk about G3 rifles, which they claim have not ever been used uh, in our elections since 1982. They talk about in Tamale, 250 of these GT rifles have already been, been dispatched to uh, security officers there. What, do you, what reaction do you have on this allegation that you've printed 600,000 voter ID cards? Ivan, good evening to you, especially and then to your listeners and viewers. I must say yesterday we exposed the MPP for the attempt to steal the 2016 election. At that press conference, we played their voice. Today, what are they doing is just a cover-up. How can you make such an allegation? First and foremost, by law, political parties have voter registers given to them. At what point did the NDC and NDC go nice to register persons? How are those persons going to be asked to register, which is already in MPP's hands? and other political parties. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when people speak, they should spread people who are listening with some modicum of what respect that we have sent. If they don't, at least people who are listening have. That political parties have been using registers already. And then you are saying that another political party has gone to register new persons. At what stage were these persons registered? Hello? I can hear you, sir. At what stage were these persons registered? And, and when, 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 how are they going to be added to the registers that already are available with all the political parties that we know is the certified register that we are all using? 
there was a registration process. Then there was exhibition. Indeed, even before the exhibition was done, political parties were given the register. Then the final register comes out after the exhibition. Political parties are given this register. Then you come and then you are throwing allegations left, right, center, which doesn't sit well even with elective process. Now, Mr. Adams, <laughs> they allege that you've printed ID cards. Have you printed any ID cards to I'm some supporters of your people? I won't be surprised if they have gone to print some ID, fake ID cards. Of we are not interested in that. We know we are winning a free fair election. We will not engage in any act that will undermine the electoral process and the sanctity of our election. We have done no such thing. So tell me, what about the allegation? Are you aware of any deployment and dispatch of G3 rifles to some parts of the country, particularly in Tamale? They claim they have evidence that 250 of these GT rifles have been dispatched and they are raising alarm about it because this claim is unusual. Ivan, there is a military base in Tamale. There is a military base in Bronga Afro Sinyani, there is a military base in Kumasi, there is one in Takradi, there is one in Wu, and there will surely be movement of arms for their use. The military don't use microphones as you are doing. So if the military is moving their equipment, why should we be interested and worried about military moving equipment from one uh, 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 point to another for the IU. Okay, I mean, let's talk about tomorrow, though. Um, you're prepared for tomorrow? Everything is set as far as your own ground game and organization of your polling agents, etc. Everything set? I can tell you that we are very ready for tomorrow. We have trained our agents. We have indicated to them what they must look out for what they must allow and not allow. And we, we are very ready for it, the tomorrow's election. We know that Ghanaians will want to continue. Ghanaians will want the good that is happening to carry on. And so our candidate is going to win. We are more than ready for tomorrow. Thankfully, I've just been joined again by uh, Peter McMurray, campaign uh, manager uh, for the NPP. Ms. Adams, hold the line briefly for me. Uh, Mr. McMurray, you allege that 600,000 ID cards have been printed. Ms. Adams is asking... When were these cars printed? Hello, Mr. McMenu. Hello, sir. Okay, uh, we don't seem to have him on the telephone line. Uh, but thank you very much, sir, for your time, uh, Mr. Kofi Adams. Thank you that you joined us uh, on this, uh, of course developing story that we're hearing from the MPP headquarters. They just finished a press conference uh, there uh, at which they allege uh, that uh, the NDC uh, has printed some 600,000 ID cards uh, meant to be distributed to NDC supporters across the country in collusion with some EC officials. They also allege that the deployment of GT rifles uh, to parts of the country, they claim that practice is irregular, uh, knowing what has happened over the last uh, few elections, and they in fact challenging the Chief of Defense staff and the IGP uh, to come and deny uh, if what they've put out there is inaccurate. Uh, Malik, let me come to you. You've heard these allegations. Surprise at them? What do you make of them? Um, okay, so the two allegations, Kofi Adams appears to... Um back the other one the, the one about the g3 rifles that have been deployed but the the the, the other one in contention is a printing of six hundred thousand um id cards it's it's difficult to understand how this will happen mcmenu tried to explain that the reason for this is to allow give these id cards to ndc members who would then beat the the verification system i.e they will not use the manual for uh, the the BVD verification system, if they were to use the BVD verification system, their, their whatever details they have will not match uh, on the register. So they want to use manual verification. 
I think that the first course of action, as the, we had the EC chair say, is the first thing to do when you go to the, 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 the police center is to verify using the, 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 the biometric verification system. Use that. It's only on, in exceptional cases that people are allowed to do manual verification. Mm -hmm. Even that manual verification, the person who is allowing you to do that must write, must fill a form and justify why you are being allowed to do manual verification. You know, so I think all that the political parties must accept that you are allowed to go through manually. Absolutely. If the political party agents are reluctant to allow you to go through, it will not work. Mm. And those who vote using those who vote with manual verification, yes, will be entered on a separate paper, so that in, uh, during the tabulation or the collision of the of, of the election results, that is made clear. Mm. But the part, the fact of the matter is, after going through the verification machine, and the machine fails to recognize you, the political party agents must come to a conclusion, a decision to allow you to vote. Manual, that's what the law says. So it's actually a, an exception, not the rule. Yeah. So the manual verification is an exception, not the rule. Therefore, if anyone were to even print these 600,000 uh, ID cards and giving them out to people, it will be difficult for anyone to be able to use them and, and, and vote. The second leg is... And, and he let's, stay on that a bit. let's stay on that a bit. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to, for me to understand what these 600,000 cards will do. Because as we've established right now, the law makes the ID cards secondary mm. in the yes, verification sir. process. Yeah. In fact, you can vote without an ID card. Yes, you don't need an ID card to vote. When you get to the polling center, it's good to go with ID card. It just fastens the process. But without it, you can still vote, correct? That's what the CI yes, says. Yes, and I think I, mean, the, I can actually go through. Simply, let's do what that. It, let's it do says that. that where a biometric verification device fails to verify a registered voter and a red light is shown with a voice message rejected, the polling assistant shall inform the agents of the political parties present at the polling station uh, that person will have to complete a verification form as set out in uh, in the shadow mm. hand over the computer verification form to the verification officer the officer shall draw a horizontal line across the voters barcode in the register to indicate that the voter has been manually verified now at this stage all the political party agents must come and accept that the person before them is a rightful owner of the voter id card even though uh failed by the machine, he is the person. In other words, in other priority is given to the biometric verification first than the, voter the manual ID one. Cards. So his you know, claim so is that this this connivance really is for the EC officials to then make it possible or easier to soften the rules and allow people to 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 beat this system by using manual. I still think that it will be difficult for that to happen if the party agents play their role, if the party agents are vigilant as they are uh, encouraged to be, um, if the EC officials do what they are supposed to do, I think it will be dif difficult for anyone to use these ID cards, even if it were true that they were printed. Now, that's, of course, it talks about the deployment of the GT mm. rifles. And GT. again, there I have questions because it says Tamale. We know how Tamale is a pretty volatile place when it comes to elections and politics. I was at the, at, in the heart of it ballot myself box. a couple of weeks ago where we held the ballot box there. It makes absolute sense to me, just on the face of, even if what you're saying, the allegation is true, why you want to put your best men, your best equipment in terms of security in Tamale and elsewhere. You mentioned that Tamale they deployed, what, 250 GT rifles. I mean, if, and, and I remember when we were doing the ballot box, when the audience who were, who were um, you know, G3 rifles, when the audience heard that they had called the military to approach the grounds of having, having the ballot box, people dispersed. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I'm, I'm imagining the show up in this, whatever, G, G3 rifles, he says it's a tactic to intimidate. But you can also argue that it's, if, when people know that they're not going to be tolerated, if you have, if you have an ulterior motive, you'll be worried about a GT rifle, will you? A GT rifle. Of course, you will not be worried about a GT rifle. And you know, Mr. McManu is only giving a voice to. Or rather, if you have an ulterior motive, <laughs> a GT rifle will, will be a problem for you. <laughs> but if you're going there to simply go and cast your ballot and go home, mm. I mean, you don't why have should you worry? But the argument is that such heavy. Armory and equipment and weapons only serve to intimidate. He actually claims that they have been decommissioned, which is if they are decommissioned, it means they are actually no longer in use, yeah. but they are being deployed and in his words being given to 
uh, cadets who have just passed out. I wonder where these these mm. cadets are and who are going to use this. But Elton was saying something. Uh, yeah, I'm saying that uh, Mr. McMahon only gave you know voice to a rumor that's been on social media since morning mm. about a police bullion van. Uh, they provided a registration number, and the allegation is that that particular bullion van is the one carrying these decommissioned weapons to some of these areas, and it goes on to say that it is meant to intimidate voters in some selected constituencies across the country so i am not really surprised that the mpp is coming up with this but it is if it, if this is for the use of the security personnel we have according to the ec chairperson uh, 64,000 security personnel they've deployed at all the polling centers yeah. if it is for their use because this election we are going in emotions are high yeah the opposition we've already seen three pony <laughs> yes the opposition two people dead already and Absolutely. we haven't even cast the first ballot yet two people yeah. are already dead yeah. so if this is if this will ensure that there is order and law at the polling centers i'm all for it yeah but it is for any other business then perhaps the the, the, the security person because at this yeah. stage in our regions in our districts in our municipal areas the police administration takes over in terms of the hierarchy at the security council they yeah. are in charge now and they are supposed to be independent if this is going to help with their work to ensure that people will not misbehave on election day that would be well and good yeah okay now one of the things we'll be doing very shortly uh we have the very latest from the inspector mm. general of police he's been addressing uh the press today uh the expressing cautious optimism with barely 24 hours to the polls warning they will not countenance any form of hooliganism now we've been having a conversation about the npp allegations of the police and uh, the ch uh, well, chief of defense staff uh, in some collusion to intimidate voters in some parts of the country with the deployment of what g3 rifles in tamale 250 of them uh, my colleague Jifa bampo who also heads uh, the uh, security desk will be joining me shortly as we analyze what the uh, igp has been saying as far as security arrangements are concerned stay with us here on your election headquarters, our special programming ahead of the elections continues shortly.